Overture, curtains, lights. This is it. You'll hit the heights. And oh, what heights will hit. On with the show. This is it. Extra 10 points for anyone who can tell me what that's from. Welcome. Welcome, my friends, to Trippy Food live stream number 35. Can you believe on 35? Those are the numbered ones. So we're actually on number 35. But we, we've also done some other like um, holiday live streams. I think we did like a live one on Halloween. So it was our Halloween live stream. Didn't have a number. So, but as far as the numbered ones, we're on 35. Now, as, um, so, hey, hey uh, Tom, I, I didn't catch you in the uh, chat to say hello, but I just saw that you popped in. So welcome, Tom, old guy in Colorado. Welcome back. Uh, also, Steve Russell, welcome back. They're all popping in right now. Um, so uh, Janice seemed to be the only one that caught it, at least that, uh, that I saw, that uh, she noted that our episode, which one was that? Um, last episode we did, I think it was a dollar, uh, the uh, dollar dining episode that we did on Thursday was our 400th episode. And again, that's our 400 numbered episode. So we've done other episodes. We've done specials. Uh, we've done, um, I think we did coronavirus specials. We do, we do holiday specials and everything else. So it's actually more than 400. We actually have more than 400. But uh, she duly noted on the episode that it was our 400th uh, episode. So we'll call it our 400th. I mean, even though like, like technically we got way more than 400, we're gonna, we're gonna say that that's our 400th episode. So there's there's a landmark for you. We're at 4,000 subscribers and 400 episodes and 35 live streams. You know, uh, give or take a few. Actually, give a few, not take a few. So there we are. Uh, who else came into the room? Uh, so for those of you who are wondering who uh, Pretty Girl E and um, Haley Gutcha Tuber are, uh, those are my precious little granddaughters. And um, and they are joining the uh, chat today. Now, their mom, Julie, who you all know, I think, or most of the regulars know, uh, she is, I think she's on her way back from uh, Florida today. So um, so she will probably not join us unless she, she's like, I don't know if she's going by plane. I don't know if she's going by car. I'm not sure how she's, uh, how she's going. So we may or may not hear from her depending on what time it is and when she decides to check in. So uh, look at this. Tom has got everybody. Tom is just... Hey, uh, uh, Bob in the room, REA Junior Music, 4,000 happy people. Well, uh, maybe they're happy sometimes. They're not all happy, and they're not all happy all the time. So, but let's hope, let's hope they're happy. And let's hope that, that joining our Trippy Food live stream makes them happier on this Saturday. Uh, or Sunday, if you're in Australia. Do we have any Australians? I'm trying to remember if we have any, uh, any regulars that pop in that are from Australia. I'm not sure. Uh, so let's see who else. Adam, Adam Hebb joined in. Welcome, Adam. Uh, John Millard joined in. It's Millard, not Millard, right? I think. Uh, John Millard joined us. So uh, we're we got a, a rowdy crowd already. A lot of our regulars. Um, we are going to obviously do our uh, food and drink ultimate foodie quiz cards. Uh, I wait a little bit, and hopefully um, the Cassandra will join us because I don't want to disappoint her and start the cards without her. John Millard. Okay, I am right. All right. I will remember that. I think it's easy to remember. Um, you know, as opposed to like, like as a first name, like Millard Fillmore, who was a U.S. president, and everyone says Millard, but his last name, it's Millard. So uh, most people get it wrong. Yeah, again, I think that because they go by that, by the first name, which is Millard, as opposed to the last name, which is Millard. So uh, I have one of those tricky last names, too. I'm sure a lot of us do. But um, anyways, welcome on this uh, bright and subtle, cool uh, Southern California afternoon. It's supposed to, I think, supposed to hit 60 today. I don't think it's supposed to go higher than 60 today, which to me is nice. A uh, few patchy clouds. Uh, so I sound like a weatherman. A few patchy clouds, blue skies. Uh, it's been raining off and on all week, and it's probably next week, probably gets more rain. Uh, this week coming up, kind of gets more rain. Dan, the former Pork Chop Express, is here. You are here, Dan. Welcome. Welcome back. Lazy Saturday hanging out with my five-year-old birthday girl. Hey, happy birthday to your uh, your girl. Bright and sunny here, about 23 degrees. Fahrenheit or Celsius? Um, you are, uh, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. I was, I'm going to say New York. Is that right? Oh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah, so it's cold. It's, it's uh, late January, almost February there. It's going to be cold. Uh, good day to you, Dan. Let's see. Uh, okay. Everybody's talking. El Marijuano 209 is in the room. <laughs> it's funny. That's what you write, too. So, um, 
uh, or 209, as uh, as your area code would uh, uh, would lead us to believe. Sonic Jet in the room. All right, so they're popping in. We're they're, we're uh, we're we're popping in. Uh, today again is not uh, trippy food beer night, which reminds me, like afterwards, which is actually trippy food. I mean, probably Saturday is my trippy food beer night. I have to go out and get a uh, get a decent beer for tonight. But today is not trippy food beer night on the live stream. So today is um, is uh, soft drink day, uh, trippy food soft drink day. And so we have three unusual soft drinks. It is a toasty 19 degrees in Massachusetts. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the Massachusetts I remember. Uh, and you guys have got some snow this this year, off and on. I think uh, most of the uh, the Upper East Coast, I guess, the Mid Atlantic and the and the uh, New England states, I think, have gotten some snow this year. So, uh, and I think uh, uh, Tom, you've got you guys have got some uh, snow in Colorado as well, right? Mel, have you seen the new commercial for the Omega Mart? In Las Vegas is a cool art superstore parody. I have not. I will have to check that out. You know, it, it's uh, well. I mean, is it an actual store that is a parody, or is it a parody of a store? So, like in other words, it's a video that's a parody of a store, or is it an actual store? Sonic, let me know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nor'easter coming Monday. Yeah. Well, again, it it is late. Uh, it is late January, so it is on YouTube. No, I will give you a link. That would be cool. Yeah, give us all a link. Just put it, you know, put it on there. Put the link on there. We'll all check it out. It stars Willie Nelson. It's really trippy. Well, it would be trippy if it stars Willie Nelson. So I can see by that number that I don't trust that there's 12 people watching uh, in the chat. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, but uh, we've got four snacks and three beverages. We're going to do snack, beverage, snack, beverage, snack, beverage, snack, you know, ad nauseum. Um, so for the beverages, um, I have Ariel, but I also have uh, Richard Simmons. And you may be asking why this is Richard Simmons. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, and the reason I have Richard Simmons is because if you look at the top of Ariel, she's got this point right here, and Richard doesn't. And um, so um, I save uh, the, the, the bottle caps they have names on them and everything, and one of them today does. And I and I, that little point on top of Ariel um, puts a little dent in the bottle cap, and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to use this one, at least on those. So let's review our snacks, shall we? Okay. Uh, uh, barometer is starting to fall Sunday night for that nor'easter. Love that weather this time of year. Yeah, me too. I mean, winter should be winter, right? Uh, here it's like, you know, sunny all year round, a couple cool days, some rain. But uh, yeah, I miss three, I mean, four uh, distinct seasons. Fall is my favorite time of year. The leaves change color and everything. Not here, though. Hey, Philip Gerard in the room. Welcome, Phil. Hey, uh, at some point in time, you and I need to get caught up on your little venture to, um, uh, is it L&H, I think it is, the, the uh, uh, Asian market that you went to in, um, uh, not, it's not, um, not in Charleston, outside of Charleston. But uh uh, let me know. Uh, give me a, like a, an update on those things that you that you got. And I think you said you were going to get the um, the Chinese bitter melon. Let me know if you went out and got that and what you what your thoughts are. Again, um, be cautious when you cook with it because um, it can be really, really. I mean, it's not just a catchy name, bitter melon. It's like it's seriously bitter. So. Uh, it's in North Charleston. Oh, OK, that's right. I, I was thinking it was in. Um, what is it? Uh, Mount Pleasant. I think it was thinking of Mount Pleasant, but I knew it was. I knew it's over the bridge. I knew it's outside of Charleston, but I'm, I wasn't sure exactly where. Um, uh, when uh, when I was out there, um, we uh, we picked up some groceries. We picked up uh, some pig uterus, and um, and then uh, we also had the pho that they have at the front of the store, which is really good. So, yeah, cool place. Cool place. You want to check it out on your phone while you talk to us? No. Uh, I mean, it's not that I can't multitask. It's just that I'm kind of focused on this. And if I go to the phone thing, then I'm going to be looking, then I'm not going to be talking, then I'm not going to be interacting, then I'm going to miss the chat and everything. But I will check it out afterwards. But I will check it out afterwards. Then, or maybe I will, I, will, I will check it out and then we can talk about it on the next live stream. How about that? I want to know if you like the commercial. I, I will let you know. But this is like I don't want to interrupt the live stream to do that right now. So uh, we skipped the pig uterus. Yeah, well, you know, it, uh, it's actually pretty good, but uh, 
I will love it. Okay. Well, I will uh, again, Sonic. I will let you know. Uh, I will. Uh, I will wa probably watch it after this, and then, like I said, we can talk about it next week as well. But thank you. Um, but you didn't. Uh, I'm trying to see. Did you provide the link for that? I'll make sure you provide the link. We may not chat too much because our internet is down and we are watching on my phone. Okay, that's fine, uh, Janice. Um, uh, just throw in when you can. Um, so uh, we got more people in the room, and if you missed if you missed my little intro, I was wondering, did anybody catch that? If you caught the intro, do you know what that's from? Uh, I'll repeat it um, to see if anybody knows what it's from because we have more people in the room. Overture, curtains, lights. This is it. You'll hit the heights. And oh, what heights will hit. On with the show. This is it. So let's see. Does anybody know? It was just a, it was just a clever intro I decided to try. But uh, we'll see if anybody re recognizes that intro. Have you ever eaten a whole goat? Not in one sitting. I have eaten, I have eaten a cooked whole goat, but I, but, uh, but I didn't eat the whole goat myself. No, so that's a little bit. Uh, hey, on top of it, Philip Gerard and REA Junior Music. Aunt and and Tom, of course, Tom, you would know that. Merry Melodies. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be Mer Mer Melody, Mera, Merry Melodies. I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was considered Looney Tunes or not. I think it was like um, probably in the 70s, the 60s and se maybe 70s when they, uh, when they were on television and they put them all together like Saturday morning thing. And, uh, you know, they're all dancing and everything, all of them together, you know, not trying to kill each other or anything, so. I like goats. They're precious animals. Never thought as them as food. Well, that's an American thing. Americans probably eat less goat than anywhere else in the world. Um, but, but everywhere else they eat goat. And uh, goat's actually delicious. So um, it's it, And it strikes me as kind of strange. I, I had this discussion with somebody. I think I'm trying to remember if it was on Facebook, Twitter or something. And um, they were talking about... A, a, no, no, I know what it was. it was. It was somebody had left a comment on my... Uh, trippy food episode where I was eating chiguiro, which is capybara in South America. And they were going like, why would you eat them? They're adorable and everything else and like that. And I said, would you eat a horse? And they said, yeah, I would eat a horse. I'm like, well, well, I don't understand. It's like, why are some animals taboo and other ones not? Like I can see if you're a vegan, you're not going to eat anything. You're not going to eat any animals, right? But but why are some animals taboo and other ones are not? Like, uh, like uh, pigs, right? I mean, dogs, right? So people say, oh, you can't eat a dog. They're so intelligent, right? But pigs are more intelligent than dogs, and we have no problems eating pigs at all. So I, I, I can't wrap my head around it sometimes where, you know, people will pick a particular animal, a particular type of animal, and say, oh, you shouldn't eat those for whatever reason. And it's like, you know, a, a horse is just, you know, a, a large four-legged mammal like a cow, right? So, but we eat cows. We don't think anything of it, but we won't eat horses. So maybe we don't eat anything that we'll give a name to. Like people have a problem with guinea pig. So like you have a pet guinea pig and you give it a name. So people have a problem with eating guinea pig because, you know, anything you would keep as a pet or a domestic animal, I think people have a problem with. I, I don't understand it. I, the thing is, yeah, cows, pigs, chickens, I can understand, but goats, it, I can't, I, what about lamb, sheep, right? I mean, a sheep isn't, it, sometimes you can't even tell a sheep from a goat. So some, some goats look like sheep, some sheep look like goats, but people eat sheep, people eat lamb. I don't understand it. Although I like your ELP quote at the start of a recent video. <laughs> yeah, uh, somebody else caught that as well. I can't remember who it was. They caught that as well and they responded to that. So um, I try to throw in, um, you know, uh, maybe obscure, uh, or somewhat obscure references at the beginning of the live streams or the videos. I would eat a dog. Uh, Steve Russell, I would eat a dog too. I would not eat my dog. I would not eat Doodle. I would not eat the neighbor's dog. Uh, I, in fact, I would not eat a dog in, in the United States where it is illegal to eat a dog. However, if I was in Korea and I was in a restaurant that, that specifically served dog, I would try dog. Um, you know, because culturally, that's what that's what they do. So, so I would. Uh, we think of cows and pigs and chickens as used for farming, so meat is required, but other animals, they are scared. Scared? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think a cow is scared when you go to kill it, I think. I don't know. Oh, sacred. Okay, yeah. Well, well then think about uh, India, right? Cows are sacred in India. People don't eat beef in India, right? Uh, in, uh, in Muslim countries, they don't eat pork. So, you know, it's a it's a cultural thing, I suppose. 
Sewer rats may taste like pumpkin pie, but I ain't eaten. Well, um, I have eaten multiple rodents, and most of them are good. The only one that's kind of questionable is the um, nutria. Nutria is kind of swampy. It has a little bit of funk to it. Um, but all the other rodents that I've eaten, uh, I've eaten muskrat, I've eaten uh, beaver, I've eaten, um, I know what I just said. It's a family channel. Um, I have eaten capybara. Um, I even ate a baby mouse that was in some mouse wine. And uh, that wasn't good, though. That was not good. I have only eaten lamb chops once in a while, but not always. Well, you can't eat everything always, right? If it's cooked a sick, if it's cooked a sick, it's all good, even hagfish. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Somebody, uh, somebody made a comment on my hagfish video and said, "Oh, well, you have to do it like this." And I think they might know how to cook it. And I think, I think we are going to redeem ourselves on the hagfish because if, if anybody has not seen the hagfish episode, you can look it up afterwards. Our hagfish episode was a dismal failure. The, the, it just melted into a bloody goop, um, and it was inedible. Not inedible that it didn't taste good. It's just you, there's no way to eat it. Um, but somebody left a comment about how you're supposed to cook hagfish. And I'm going to take that as that they know how to cook hagfish. And I'm probably going to peg them for cooking hagfish for me so that we can eat it the right way. And we can actually eat it and taste it. So I'm in a car right now. You are. Wow. So, uh, make, as long as you're not driving now, I, I, I'm guessing that, um, you're not driving because you're like eight years old. So you don't drive. Uh, although Doodle's out right now, so he came in earlier looking for the car key, car keys. Said, "When are you going to be back?" He says, "Later. Don't don't wait up for me." So he's out. Uh, I think uh, he's out heading out to the mountains because he wants to see some snow. We may or may not see him today. If we do, um, uh, Claudia unfortunately has his um, the the same company that makes those uh, chicken snacks that he loves also makes these liver snacks, which is the same thing. It's just kind of um, uh, sliced and baked. Um, they're really, really crunchy, and uh, he loves those. So, uh, but I don't have those because Claudia has those with with her and and Doodle. But I do have the dead fish snacks. So if he comes in, you know, if he comes in early and he comes in, we get some dead fish snacks for him. Uh, we're making homemade chicken nuggets using our farm chickens. I bet they're delicious. Processing through a food process with almond flour seasoning, mold them in nugget, deep fry. That sounds really good, Dan. That really does. Um, you know, I, I can't stand the, the uh, um, kind of mealy um, uh, chicken nuggets that they have at McDonald's. They, they kind of taste like that that uh, paper insulation that 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 they use. Uh, <laughs> I see a pretty girl can no text and drive. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's not going to. Uh, or raccoons. Raccoons are delicious. We had raccoons. Did a trippy food episode on raccoons. So look that one up, Sonic. Sorry, it's cooked on a stick. Oh, if it's cooked on a stick, on a stick. But which would refer? Oh, the the uh, rodents on a stick. I bet they would be good over an open fire. Sure, I bet they'd be good. Make sure you take the hair off. I guess you could burn it off. Val, if you were starving and desperate, would you ever go Andes and cannibalize other humans? Only in that situation. Somebody once asked me that way. What what would you not eat? And they said, would you ever eat human being? And I said, yes. Under two in two circumstances, would I eat human being? Not human beings human being. One would one would be if I was in a South American soccer team and the, our plane crash landed in the Andes, some of us were dead. And uh, those of us who were not, um, you know, got to eat. Uh, I would not I would not starve to death, unfortunately. Uh, and the other situation is, 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 let's say I got in a really, really bad car crash and my leg got got mangled so badly that they couldn't save it and they had to cut it off. Well, at the hospital, I'd be like, hey, can you put that on ice for me and uh, wrap that to go? We'd have leg of Val. Uh, so that, that would be the other circumstance. But other than that, that's where I kind of draw the line. The whole thing about um, the whole thing about like being in an Andean plane crash with a soccer team is um, is like I've often, often told people like an elevator gets stuck and I start looking at the weakest person in the elevator. I'm like, you're first. Um, that's not true, though. I would not eat somebody in an elevator. There's no cooking utensils or anything. I hope your dog is safe. My dog is safe. Uh, uh, Doodle is is out today. He is out uh, going to uh, find snow in the mountains to play in the snow. So uh, I'm going to stick to say hi to people that come in. Okay. <laughs> Tom, it, it, be, be you, Tom. Just be you. You know, 
It, I mean, if, if you didn't make a mistake every once in a while, you wouldn't be human. So I, I'm pretty sure you're human, right? You're not a, like a Terminator robot or anything, right? Scott Mansfield in the room. And Scott is saying hello to everybody. Hello, Scott. Who is pretty girl? Is she a child? Yes, she is your, what is it? Is it a grandniece? How does that work? It's uh, uh, Haley and Chloe are both on, Phil. It's Haley and Chloe. So I can't remember which one's which. Well, I think, no, Haley has Haley in the name, I think. I think that's right. Hang on a second. I'll tell you in a second. Because they were, they were like, yes, Haley has Haley in her name, so that's Chloe. So pretty girl is Chloe. She's eight years old. She's not driving the car. Um, what is that? Would that be grandniece? How does that work? How about that? Julie is your niece, and they are her children. So I, I don't know what that means. Hey, oh, okay. So Scott is talking to Tom. Did you hear the guy that did it in the 80s? He ate a girl in Paris. Uh, well, there's people that eat people all the time. It doesn't mean I want to be one of them. You know, I'm, I'm no Jeffrey Dahmer here, you know. Uh, while you're extreme, Val, not really. You know, think about it. I mean, like, all right, let me put you in the same situation, Sonic. If you were in a plane crash in the mountain, in these mountains, and you were there for days, there were some dead people, and you weren't dead, but you were starving to death. Would you starve to death? Would you? That's that's my own question. And then, as far as eating myself, how is that extreme? It's just me. Nobody's getting hurt, and I'm just putting me back in me, right? At least temporarily. Uh, Philip Gerardi is Val's granddaughter. Yeah, that's right. But I don't know what that makes. I don't know what. Uh, uh, so uh, Janice, Philip is my brother. So I don't know what. So we're trying to figure out what that makes uh, her to him. I, I, I always get lost in that when it skips generations and stuff like that. Val just thought of something funny. You dress up in a pink bal, bal I think you mean ballerina outfit and sprinkle rice over your favorite restaurant and then bless them. Good luck with the reopening of the shutdown rules. That would be funny. Uh, would you say over? I guess like are you talking about in the front of the restaurant? Are you talking about like on top of the restaurant, like on the roof of the restaurant, and everything? That that is some, it's funny. Um, uh, maybe doable. Yep, grandniece. Okay, I got that. I I try to figure that one out. I would start death. I wouldn't have to worry anyone. Um, Sonic, I hope you taste good. Um, I'd be grabbing the hot sauce and eating some long. <laughs> Ryan, you and I, we're not going to starve, man. We are not going to starve. Okay, let's review our snacks, shall we? Because uh, we're, how long are we? Well, not quite a half an hour in. Uh, Janice is is driving, so she can't, I mean, I'm sorry, she's on her phone because she lost internet. And um, and so she's probably not going to, like, try to keep me in line. Uh, so let's go over our snacks. So our first on our hit parade, um, I'm trying to remember where I got this. I think I got this at Cost Plus World Market, I think. And um, this is the, the brand is Fedon, which is, I guess, what that says in Greek. It looks like Greek letters. You know, I'm reading like Alpha, Omega, Epsilon, you know, Chi, Tau, and, and stuff like that. But it actually uh, it's supposed to be Fedon, Fedon, F E D O N. I don't know how that's pronounced. And this is uh, Milo Pitaki, which is uh, Greek for apple pie. So it's like this little apple pie pastry kind of thing. Um, I don't know if Milo is apple or Milo is pie. And, you know, I don't know if it's it's pie apple or apple pie, but that's that's going to be our first one. Again, I'm trying to, trying to do these in terms of flavor. So like as the, so the, the flavor will build as we go and it won't um, it won't counter anything out. Um, <laughs> enough morbid questions. Well, you, you know, ask them if you got them. Uh, hey, Val, it's John. Val, we're watching. Hey, JD in the room. Note Mans, welcome. Cool. I'm glad you are watching. So welcome back, Note Mans. And, uh, I'm glad we got uh, JD. I'm glad we got uh, got that uh, that whole situation straightened out where you can log in and you can actually talk now. So welcome. Good to see you. Uh, they remind me of the Hostess Green and White Classic Apple Pie. I, I don't think so, only because I think those Hostess Apple Pies are fried, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't think this is fried. I think this is, might be baked, but we'll see. It kind of looks almost to me looks like a um, like a, a fig Newton, but we'll see. Uh, it's round. Pie is round, as opposed to pi r square. Okay, next on our hit parade, uh, uh, this is Trader Joe's olive and herbs. A uh, funny thing about herbs is there was a discussion yesterday on the live stream on the trips, 
the Canadian guys, the trips, uh, guy and girls, guys and girl, uh, whatever, guys, I'll just say guys figuratively, <clears throat> where they were talking about herbs, where Americans say herbs and Canadians say herbs. Um, and then they, they agreed that, well, you can't say her, her, herb, herb is a person's name. So to differentiate, they might say herb too. Anyways, this is olive and herb mixed nuts, a festive mix of seasoned and roasted almonds, cashews, pecans, and olives. So there's actually olives in here. It's like a weird thing to put in mixed nuts. So, but we're all about trippy, aren't we? Goes great with, the apple pie goes great with, I bet it would. I bet it would go, go with root beer. Uh, then we have, uh, the brand is called Hesco. And um, Hesco is a uh, Thailand company. And these are crispy coconut rolls with sesame made with real coconut milk, which is really weird because you think if, if you're going to say, if you who makes fake coconut milk, right? Like coconut milk is fake milk. Like if you go to the, you go to the grocery store and you say like, I don't want to drink cow's milk. I'm going to, I'll drink coconut milk. So coconut milk is fake milk, but uh, like, what do they consider like cow's milk, fake coconut milk? I don't know, but it's made with real coconut milk. So we're going to try those. And then last and certainly not least, uh, these, which looked interesting, there were different uh, varieties of these. The company is Mitika or Mitika. I'm not sure exactly how that's pronounced. They are from, where are they from? They are from Spain. And uh, these, they, they are called um, Pica Quisos or Pica, I think it's Pica Quisos, I'm pretty sure. Uh, spicy giant corn kernels. So these are not like corn nuts. These are more like the Inca corn that they have at Trader Joe's. Uh, they're the big kernels. And uh, these are seasoned with cayenne pepper and smoked paprika. So these I think would probably be the most flavor and that's why they're going last. Remember the Yosemite Sam coconut tree. Toss coconut salad, New England boiled coconut. Wah, hates coconuts. <laughs> That one, Phil? That's one. That's the one I think you're talking about. I came to see some diving, and I'm going to see some diving. Um, all right. Now, uh, our beverages. Now, uh, first on our, our hit parade is uh, Dr. Brown's Great Scott Marty, Dr. Brown's uh, Celery. This is a uh, popular drink in uh, Jewish delis. I don't know why, but it is. Uh, Dr. Brown's does other, uh, other flavors of soda as well, but Celery is uh, celery flavored. And it occurs to me that we actually did this before. Um, I, I didn't realize it after I bought it that we had already done this before. I think it was on uh, live stream number 14. Uh, we did cell rays. So if anybody you if anybody out there remembers live stream number 14, let's just disregard it today and pretend it didn't happen. And then we'll do cell ray as if we're doing it for the first time. So that's our first one. Hey, the Cassandra in the room. We didn't start the cards yet. So the Cassandra, so you're right on time. What about carrot juice? Well, uh, we'll do a uh, we'll do a carrot juice. I think maybe not just pure carrot juice, but maybe like some sort of carrot juice drink. So in the next, uh, we'll try to do that on the not next week, because next week is Trippy Food Beer Night. Uh, so the week after that, we will try to do something with carrot juice. So we'll do that, Sonic. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, oh, we're 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 comparing Cassandras here, uh, except she is the Cassandra, Phil. Uh, number two. It was just not number two, um, and it doesn't taste like number two. I don't. I hope not. This is uh, Colombiana, and Colombiana is a drink from Colombia. Uh, it is champagne cola. Now we did on another live stream. We did a. I think it was from Costa Rica or uh, one of the Central American countries. Uh, we did a uh, champagne cola, but uh, Colombiana is the champagne cola that they use in Colombia when they're making refajo, which is a drink which is half um, half soda and half beer. And uh, Colombiana is the soda that they usually use to make a refajo. We're not going to do this today because it is not trippy food beer night. Uh, and I don't have a Colombian beer to, to mix that with. I think um, I'm pretty sure that we did an episode in Colombia on Colombia Colombian bar drinks and snacks. And we might have done, we would have made, made refajo uh, with Colombiana. Again, I'm just going to act like we didn't do it. And, uh, and we're going to be drinking this like we're drinking it for the first time. And then, uh, let's see, did I miss anything? I, uh, champagne called the kind I tried was nasty, but it was Topps brand. I don't, I've never seen Topps brand. Uh, usually champagne cola 
I don't know if there's a lot of U.S. producers of champagne cola. Usually the ones that I see are um, either uh, Central American or South American. Is horchata popular in Latin countries or only in Mexico? I think only in Mexico. I think it's a big thing in Mexico. I'm not familiar with uh, like horchata. And I've been to Colombia a few times. And I don't know they drink a lot of horchata in Colombia. So I think it's a, I think it's a Mexican thing. <clears throat> and certainly, you know, it's a Southern California thing because of our proximity to Mexico. So our third beverage, and uh, this is um, World Market brand. So it is their house brand of soda. I love bottles. It's a nice bottle. It has that little thing on the top like Grosch uh, beer does. You know, we uh, crack the thing open, which is kind of nice. Uh, there's some like raised lettering here. It says, uh, let's see, lemonade. Um Something naturals, I guess natural, de citron, uh, France. So this is from France, and this is blood orange and grapefruit. Uh, they say they say lemonade. I, it's it's a lemonade bottle, but everything else says French soda. I'm not seeing anything that says lemon at all. So it is a blood orange grapefruit French soda, and uh, that's our our third beverage. So uh, we cover everything. Uh, obviously, we're going to drink one of those, each one of those in its own little shot glass. So we have three shot glasses today. We have uh, this fine one with this Art Deco architecture on it from Miami Beach. Um, also from Florida, we have uh, uh, this glass from Venice, Florida, which is the shark's tooth capital of the world. And by shark's tooth, I mean prehistoric shark's teeth. Um, you go down to the beaches down there with like a sieve. You dig up, you know, you sieve in the sand and, and you just pull up shark's teeth. They're crazy. They're all over the place down there. So, hey, Snorkel in the room. Welcome, Snorkel. Did I forget anybody? Uh, I'm yapping. I'm not paying attention. You guys got to keep me honest. Again, I said this previously. Until we get some mods, um, I'm, I, I need you guys to kind of keep me honest and keep me uh, informed. So if uh, if you ask something or if you come in the room and say hello and I didn't respond to you and everything, please just shoot it back out there. Uh, or somebody else say, hey, you didn't respond to so-and-so, and and I will respond. Because I want to make sure that I, that um, we are interactive and that I do respond to everybody uh, who's out there. You know, at, at some point in time when we have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, which wouldn't that be nice, um, you know, we may have like a thousand people in the room at one time, and it may be less practical to do that. But for now, um, we get 4,000 subscribers, and maybe we get like a 36 to 40 um, people in any given time, and it's manageable right now. But again, hey, Q, the critic in the room, everybody, Q, uh, hey, Q, I, is this your first? Uh, is this your first live stream? I don't remember if I've seen you on any of the other live streams before. Um, if it was, it was probably a ways back. But welcome, good to see you, man. How you doing? That's it's Q, the critic, everybody. Uh, you can see him in uh, in uh, some of our trippy food videos. We've done uh, quite a few videos with uh, with Q, the critic. So, uh, well, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you. Glad you could join us. And Amy Cakey in the room. All right, now it's a family. Uh, let's see. Uh, Amy, good to see you too. Oh, and you can see me. I can't see you. I just see your name and your little um, your little burger uh, avatar. Okay. Did I? So, just just a a, a process check here. Have, am I caught up with everybody? Did I miss anybody? Did I did I miss any greeting anybody? Did, has anybody asked me anything or made a, a, a comment that I need to, to address? Are we good? Let me know. I compared Amy Cakey to Cassandra, Cassandra before. And, and, and looks, I mean, it, how did you compare? I mean, they both always look the same. Oh, I I don't know that I've like, I've drilled down to see what people look like and everything. Like, uh, you know, Obviously, you know, I'm in the middle of a, of a live stream and I'm, you know, and, and I can't really click to see people. Um, I mean, like even like Janice, she's just like this big. I know what Janice looks like because you know, we've done episodes with Janice. And, and that's the funny thing is, is uh, so Tom, old guy in Colorado, it's like your avatar. You got that nice big full beard and now you don't. Now you, you're nude faced like me. And uh, tiny Val. Uh, uh, I am not late, am I? Well, we haven't started our uh, snacks yet, Starfly. So, so you are a hey, new new avatar, Starfly. Yes, no. Uh, welcome, Starfly, to the room, please. All right. So I'm gonna guess because nobody said anything that um, 
I'm all, caught, I'm all caught up here. And I don't owe anybody any kind of response yet. So that's good. Just like I said, keep on top of me, at least for the time being. Maybe uh, hopefully we'll get some um, some mods and um, and we'll be able to keep up and make sure that we don't miss anything. All right. Uh, what's your shirt? As far as I can tell, it is um, it is like the schematics for making an alligator. As far as I can tell, uh, I got this at a place called Cargo in Portland, Oregon. I just thought it looked cool with the alligator on and everything, but I really honestly have no idea what all this stuff is. I don't know if it's like uh, like they did a, a autopsy on the alligator and these are or they they're tr how to build one. I don't understand. I just kind of like the shirt. I thought it was cool, but that would be a good tattoo, Sonic. Uh, currently drinking Saranac Peach IPA. We did a we did a Saranac. What was it? The orange uh, like the orange cream. I think we did a Saranac, but it was a soda. It wasn't their one of their beers. Uh, it is okay. I was wondering about that because uh, I know that they're a brewery and I know they did they did beer. The one we tried was a soda though. Only you would have an alligator schematic. I'm guessing that's what it is. I don't, you know, that's to me that's what it looks like. Like if you want to build an alligator, these are the things that you need. So I just like I said, I just thought it was a cool shirt. Uh, all right, so are we ready to start? Let us start because we're we're on the half hour. Uh, it's a good time to start. We will start with our. Um, Fed on apple pie, uh, which is, you know, the, I think the only thing in English on the whole thing is the word apple pie. Uh, oh, best before September 10th, 2021. Now that's good. That's good to know. Not that we wouldn't need it if it was already expired anyway, but, uh, you know, it's better that it's not. Oh, the watermelon Dell. Yes, uh, it was just okay. That's too bad. The uh, So a Dell is like a shandy, I think, right? And it's usually a summer drink. Uh, and so usually I think that's uh, they're t they're typically lemon like I, and I think that Narragansett did a lemon Dell as well, but um, that's too bad it was just okay. Eat in one big bite. I probably could. I think that's like mouth mouth size, but you know what fun is that? Maybe I'll choke to death. That could be fun. All right, so we are going to start with a card. So glad you could make it to Cassandra early because now we're going to start with the cards. So. Our first card, oh yeah, I like this one. I mean, I like this one. I mean, I literally like this one. Um, what is the main ingredient in a black pudding? Again, the question, what is the main ingredient in a black pudding? Uh, it is multiple choice, but I'm not going to read the multiple choice questions because I think it probably give it away. And not that there's rules. Again, if, if let, me re, let me recap the rules on the cards. If you know it, throw it out there. If you want to take a guess, and you don't know if you know it or not, but you want to take a guess, throw it out there. If you want to Google it, look it up, then throw it out there, do that too. So basically, the rules are, there are no rules. So again, let me repeat the question. What is the main ingredient in a black pudding? Val, how about you do your question backwards? Give the answer first, and then let us guess the question. Oh, I'll do that on the next one, Sonic. I will do that. Be like the great Karnak. The great Karnak, anybody? Tom, I know you know. Uh, Bob, I'm assuming you know. Uh, JD, I'm assuming you know the great Karnak. Philip, you know the great Karnak. I know you guys know. Unfortunately, no, we are not wrong. Well, I hope you are all wrong. That's gross. Oh, Philip, aren't you? Philip, take a guess. Take a guess. What is the main ingredient in a black pudding? All right, time to open a snack. So we are going to eat our Greek apple pie from Fedon. Now, it's not it's not like it's not this big. So, it's anybody's guess what their definition of an apple pie is. Let's see. Yes. Uh, Tom Philip got you're all right. Johnny Carson, the great Carnac. Man was a genius. Looks like a big cookie. That's interesting. It got that little uh, mattress pattern on it. You see that? That's interesting. I'm gonna break it in half so we can see. Look in the inside. Ooh, look at that. It's like a like a jelly, like an apple jelly, more so than like it's not like um, what you typically find uh, filling in an apple pie. That's like 
semi-solid. Here we go. <laughs> Bed for Tiny Val. Yeah, he, he would fit on there perfectly. Well, he would have if I didn't break it in half. Is it like a hand pie? I suppose a uh, hand pie is more like a um, like an empanada, I suppose. Like a, a hand pie would be like an empanada. So so I don't know. I don't know if this would be considered a hand pie. Um, or a finger pie, for that matter. I, I know. Time to call Muffon Val. You saw a giant cookie-shaped UFO. <laughs> Anybody who anybody who can do the the Jetson the sound of the I, I had a friend um, Paula who can, oh I have a friend Paula who can do the uh, the Jetson uh, car sound I can't do it but you know got, if, if you guys want to do that on your own while I'm doing this the Jetson car sound that'd be kind of cool so all right let's take a bite of this I love that sound too Sonic and uh, like I said some people can do that with their voice I can't. So the filling is the consistency of the filling of a. It's it's, it's very jelly like, and it's like a thing. The uh, the the um, crust, I guess, is a fair thing to say. It doesn't taste like pie crust. It also doesn't taste like a fig Newton. The crust doesn't. It is Sonic. It is very sweet. We're making a croissant for your birthday. Dare I ask what kind of croissant, Tom? You you um you did an episode where you 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 used a croissant to stuff something in, didn't you? Or um, you know what I'm 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 thinking of when you made the um, cannoli shells. When you made the cannoli shells, that's what I was thinking of. But I I imagine uh, making a croissant is. Um, the only thing is that you have to like fold the dough multiple times so you get that layer of air between them. I think that's when you're making a croissant. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a bakery chef or a pastry chef or a baker, so I don't know the ins and outs of that. But I think that I think you have to kind of layer that so the dough is light and fluffy and has that like air between each fold. I think apples are always good inside any pastry. Let's see, is there an exception to that? What do I know of? The Jetson car sound is just a high pitch. Something like that? I don't know. Close, but I, I love that song too. My birthday is February 28th. I'm a February birthday too, which is why my name is Valentino. It's like a motor soap bubbles doo doo. <laughs> Whatever that is. Croissant dinner roll, yes, folded several times. Well, if anybody can make it, Tom, I know you can. And, and like the things that you call failures, like most people can't even get as far as you get on those uh, failures. So, yeah, you know, don't give up on, on don't, don't don't give up on that getting the potatoes around a um, uh, breakfast scotch egg. I know you'll be able to do it. That's good. Um, the 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 shell or the pate uh, or the um, um, crust, if you want to call it that. It's more like a, it's cookie like. It's more like a cookie, and like I said, not like, not like a fig Newton, but very much like a, almost like a sugar cookie, but not as sugary as a sugar cookie, if that makes any sense whatsoever. And then the jelly is just like a, it's like an apple jelly in there. I mean, an apple, apple gel. Let's put it that way. Not like a jet. Not like, like peanut butter and jelly kind of jelly. That's pretty good though. Let's gonna get a thumbs up. Not if somebody like blindfolded me and go here, try this. I would not and say, What is it? I would not say apple pie, I would say, like, it's an apple cookie. It's good though. Another scotch egg try coming out Monday. Give it the old college try, Tom. Never give up. Um, Q, were you? Um, I'm trying to remember. I made balut scotch eggs. Eddie Lynn's house one time, and I don't remember if you were there or not. But I'm gonna do those again. I'm gonna make. I will do an. We'll do an episode. We're gonna make um, balut scotch eggs. They're horrific. And I figured it would be phyllo dough. So it's like phyllo dough. It's not. It's not as um, like phyllo dough gets crispier 
Filo dough is like what you'd use to make um, baklava. Okay, let's see. The Cassandra and Amy Kagi ignored me. I don't know what you said. Did you deserve to be ignored? I missed it. Sorry about that. I hope they're not mad at me. Maybe they are. Oh, nope. See, the counter said she didn't see your comment. Baklava is my favorite dessert. Q, I, can't, uh, I can eat like a piece about that big, and then that's it. It's just way, way, way too sweet for me. I don't know if it's like too much honey. I don't mind the pistachios, but um, but yeah, it's just like really ultra, ultra sweet. And I can only eat, I can eat very little of it. You know, I like it. I just like very, very tiny piece of it. Hey, Val, me and my friends have decided to go to restaurants in our area and review them. Any helpful tips? Uh, well, Scott, let's see what your area was. Right, so I take it you're not on lockdown. Uh, you are in, in, in like maybe the Buffalo area, I think. Is that right, Scott? Where are you from? I'm in line sugar, so yeah. Melt that in a spoon, right? Uh, is it? Yes, uh, Starfly, that is the same cue the critic from Ruffles Eating. You're absolutely correct. Uh, and, you know, he's got his own channel. He's got his own YouTube channel. So if you have not checked it, Q, have you, when was the last time you did a, was the last time you did an episode uh, on your YouTube channel when you and I went to um, Upper West? Was that the last time you did one? I haven't seen an episode from you, and I, I subscribe to you, so I have not seen anything. Uh, south of Rochester. Okay. Um, well, um, I would find a good place that does a, a trash plate. Trash plate would be a, a, a cool thing to review. Uh, I don't know the, the good places that have the trash plate. I would try to find it maybe maybe the one that started the trash plate and maybe go there. Um, you're probably, I, I don't know how far you are from Buffalo. There's a, there's some cool stuff like beef on weck. Um, and then well, let's see, you're quite a ways from Binghamton. So I don't think you have the speedies in Rochester. Do you? Is that, or is that like, like closer to Binghamton and stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of unusual and interesting things in that area. Um, hit me up at, uh, uh, send me an email at val at trippyfood.com and, um, and I'll come up with some stuff for you and put you in. Uh, let me know what area you're, you're looking at. And I'm assuming like, I don't know, they, have, they, have they restarted indoor dining in your area or are you talking about like outdoor dining? In outdoor dining, like your food's gonna freeze before you get a chance to eat it. But, uh, but I don't know. Um, uh, it's safe now, but you want to wear a mask and gloves. Be careful anyways. Well, I don't think they require gloves, but um, yeah, still be careful. You're right. I know you're not a big fan of chocolate, but have you ever had a chocolate stout cake? I have not, Tom, but that sounds good. I think I'm going to have to try a chocolate stout cake. I, I'm not a big fan of like like cho eating chocolate as chocolate, but things with chocolate in it or things made with chocolate and everything, um, it give, it's give or take. It depends on the quality of the chocolate. If it's like made from that Easter Bunny chocolate, no, I'm not going to like it. Uh, but, um, but if it's good chocolate, yeah, I like it. So, uh, so I don't gravitate towards chocolate. It's like, it's not my favorite flavor of ice cream or anything like that. Uh, Val, would you ever run for California governor? Um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I don't think I know enough about laws to run for a uh, governor. I might start small. I might work my way up. Uh, Henrietta Hots or Nick's Tahoe. Oh, okay. Um, those are the places that did the trash place, uh, trash plate, I imagine. So, uh, I'm talking with Scott Mansfield about, um, food from the Rochester, New York area, which is like every area, every area has unique, uh, stuff. And, and some people just eat that stuff on a regular basis. Don't think anything of it, but actually, you know, it's, uh, there's some really interesting stuff that's regional. You would make a cool politician. You love the food industry. Well, but po being a politician is more about stuff than the food industry. Maybe, you know, I mean, and then, and then you, and then you, you get into whole things like, like about the vegans, right? I mean, if, you know, you're an elected official, a politician, you got to take care of everybody. So there's a lot of conflicts there. I don't know. I can't think about that right now. Maybe later. Maybe when I get older, I'll be an old guy running for office like everybody does now. Uh, when are you trying Iffy Foods 2020 burrito, Jesse? That's an interesting question. I, I like I'm I was watching Tom eat that, and I was thinking like, no, don't put that in your mouth. No, don't eat that. Well, actually, you saw my reaction, so I was actually saying that. Um, but maybe at some point we actually have to do that. So um, 
the 2020 burrito. I'm afraid we might have to do that. So Jesse, I will take that down and 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 I think soon we will do the 2020 burrito. I don't question because Tom is a good cook. And so I don't question uh, how he made it as as far as the flavor goes. I think like like it's going to it's going to taste as good as what he made. It's going to taste that good. It's not going to get a whole lot better. So I'm a little bit scared of it, but uh, but if that's a challenge, Jesse, I will I will have to see about doing it. Got a car trace. So I'm hoping to film regularly again. So, yeah, I got one of those car trace too, like uh, Ken Domics Ken tray, uh, uh, the steering wheel tray. I got one of those as well, so I have those. Uh, get in touch with me, uh, Q, and uh, let's work some stuff out because I'm I'm going to be doing some stuff again soon, and I think uh, Matt wants to do some stuff uh, around here too as well. So. Uh, what did I miss? Did I miss anything? I'll make a video. It's made using gunnies. Gunnies? What are gunnies? Huh. Uh, help me out there. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? I want to make sure I didn't miss, miss any chocolate race cars. Not sure what those are, but I'll eat them. Oh, TH, Terry in the room. I thought he did it for the camera. So we were talking and you wrote that. And so now I can't remember what it was we were talking about. But any, anyways, welcome to the room, Terry. We missed you. I'm glad you're back. Don't eat the burrito. I, Bob, I take I take it you saw that video. So, um, but I kind of have to if, if I'm being challenged. So I, here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. If Tom challenges me to eat the 2020 burrito, then I will take it up as a as a challenge. So, so Tom, you're there. You're watching. That was by far the worst thing ever. I want to see Val swallow the bite. That sounds like a challenge, and I'm going to have to do it now. May God have mercy on my soul. All right, so uh, the question that I asked previously, that seemed like last week, uh, what is the main ingredient in black pudding? Let's go back, and let's scroll back up and see what people were saying on that. That's way up there. Okay, let's see. Uh, the Cassandra said blood. Q the Critic said blood, uh, which I, I trust that because I think Q the Critic has had that before. Um, Tom, old guy in Colorado said pig blood, so he was specific. Um, Scott Mansfield said blood. Philip Gerard said, I hope you are all wrong. That's gross. Philip, you are wrong. They are right. It is blood. And it is, in fact, as Tom said, pig's blood. Um, it's actually delicious. Um, it, you can't have an English, a full English breakfast without black pudding. It's not pudding. It's not like, uh, it's not like jello pudding. It's, uh, it, uh, uh, it's the British, um, the British version of pudding, which is basically, it, it, it's so hard to tell because like Yorkshire pudding is like a popover. Black pudding is like, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure how to describe it. It's made, it's made with like um, suet, uh, pork fat, uh, sometimes pork, pork blood. Some people put, put apples in it and other things in it and everything. And you just fry that up for breakfast and it's like, it's so good. And it goes, and you just like put a runny egg on top of that. Oh, mm, beautiful. But uh, but yes, Philip, you uh, you were the one that was wrong. It is actually pork blood, pork blood. But uh, but don't turn it down if you get a chance to try that. Don't turn it turn it down. It's actually really really good. See if there's a British pub in, in Charleston, and if and if there's a British pub in Charleston, they will probably have um, black pudding there, and you should try it. All right. Uh, wait, hang on a second. Okay, uh, black pudding is like ultra pork. So good. Well, yeah, I, like I said, um, sometimes they put pieces of pork in it, but not always. And mo sometimes it's just the pork blood. And I think maybe like uh, like buckwheat or oats, maybe something along those lines. Burrito reminds me of what you're talking. My doodle in the room. Hey, doodle. Doodle in the room. All right. Hey, everybody, say hi to doodle in his little winter coat. Did you play in the snow, doodle? Huh? Did you play in the snow? Oh, you want to lick the apple snack off my mouth? Well, you know what I have for you? I have dead fish. You want a dead fish? Here. Because you're special, because you're a special guest, you get a dead fish snack. And there he goes. Here you go. Dead fish. Yeah, almost got it. There you go. And off he goes. Doodle Hazard. Well, he was, uh, the Cassandra, he was dressed for uh, playing in the snow. I don't know if they found snow or not. But uh, his feet weren't cold, so maybe they didn't. My comments were working on your videos, old guy. Oh, old guy in Colorado. Okay. 
Uh, are you in Cali, Val, or on vacation somewhere? I am in Cali. I am home in Cali. Um, and, you know, in Cali for a while. So uh, I guess it doesn't snow somewhere here. Oh, no, no, up in the mountains. You know, up in the mountains. Like, uh, I think they were going to go up uh, Mount Wilson to see if there was snow up in Mount Wilson. Up, up, up in the uh, Angeles Forest. Um, you know, but then if I think it's maybe two hours from here is uh, um, uh, Bear, Bear Mountain, Big Bear. Big Bear. They always have snow up at Big Bear. And then if you want to drive north, you know, you go up to like Mammoth and stuff. So, yeah, there's you have mountains here. On top of the mountains, you get snow. So that's what they're trying. Did Doodle pee in the snow? I don't know. I, I don't know if he found snow. I could ask him, but he's 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 not really good at, at carrying on a conversation. Yeah, we do have snow, uh, Q. Uh, not not at not at our level, you know, not which is which kind of sucks for the winter because what is winter without snow? All right. Uh, so we did our beverage. We did a card. Time for another card. I mean, we did our snack. Time for a beverage and a card. So let's do the card. And uh, who is it? Was it Sonic? Was it you that said, let's do it backwards? Let's see if that will work. I don't know if this will work at, backwards. I will, I'll try to find one that's more appropriate to work backwards. Um, but I, I don't know that this one would. Because I think this one, this one will prompt a different uh, question then um, we'll, we'll wait on that. We'll find something that's more appropriate. But here is the question. The question is, what type of star is awarded to restaurants where the food is of exceptional quality? Again, what type of star is awarded to restaurants where the food is of exceptional quality? This I will put on the back burner here, turn it down to low. Q, you better know this. I know you know this. Tom, you probably know this too. Uh, don't eat the yellow snow. ATW in the room. No, ATW, I will not eat the yellow snow unless it is a lemon snow cone. Uh, <laughs> I like that answer, ATW. Okay, let's open up our beverage, and we are going to do, since 1869, Dr. Brown's original celery. Dr. Brown, great Scott Marty. Um, Dr. Brown's celery, again, this is a popular drink in uh, Jewish delis. I don't know why. Uh, it is celery flavored, uh, really celery flavored soda. Let's see. Uh, celery soda with other natural flavors. Let's see what other natural flavors they decide to put in here. Uh, ingredients, carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, citric acid, extract of celery seed with other natural flavors, sodium benzoate preservative and caramel color. Okay. So it is a, and again, uh, we, I think we did do this a long time ago, so let's just pretend we didn't, and we're starting from scratch. So uh, regular bottle cap, save that one. So I will use Ariel. I heard there was snow in Malibu on the beach. Uh, I heard from some people in in uh, Orange County that they got some snow in Orange County at a low level on Orange County. We didn't see any snow here, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. So for me, and tell me if anybody else gets the same thing. If you've ever smelled um, um, antifreeze, to me, antifreeze has kind of a celery smell to it. I mean, is anybody else? Is it just me that kind of gets a celery smell from antifreeze? And so when I, when I smell something with celery in it, to me, it smells like antifreeze. So I'm getting that celery smell here, which, again, is reminding me of antifreeze. If this is green, we could only be going on another 20 minutes and, or so before I die. So let's let's see. Let's use uh, let's use Venice Beach or Venice Venice Florida, not to be confused with Venice California, which is not a city. It is part of LA. So Venice Florida, which is a city, the shark's tooth capital of the world. Here we go. Okay, it is not neon green, so I'm not gonna die. As far as I know, look, look at all those bubbles jumping there. I don't, can you guys can you guys see that? Can you see the jumping bubbles? It is very effervescent. Cheers. I would think this. I was. I would think this would be sweeter. I mean, they, well, they, they use high fructose corn syrup, so it's not going to be as sweet as something using cane sugar. 
snorkel, everything that we're doing today is non-alcoholic because it is not trippy food beer night. So it is soft drink night. Trippy food soft drink night, I guess. So we have three soft drinks today. Nothing alcohol. But, but, but it raises an interesting question. If you were going to add alcohol to this, what would be an alcohol that you would add to some to a celery flavored soda? I would think maybe vodka would be really the only thing that would go, maybe. Oh, Tom, you're getting snow right now? I love snow. I miss snow. This Saturday, all tires on sale, half price. Free oil change at Val's Garage. Val doesn't even have a garage. Val is in an apartment without a garage. And Val could barely do an oil. I mean, on, a new, on an older car, in a car from the 70s maybe, I could, do, I could do an oil change. I could change spark plugs, things along those lines. Newer cars, I don't know. It's, I just look in there and I get confused. Vermouth, vermouth or gin in that soda? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, gin, gin might be actually... Yeah, that might be good. Well, you know, good for a, a celery-flavored soda. Some another sip. The the uh, the celery in there is subtle. It's not bad though. It's not bad at all. Um, like like uh, I, a lot of people don't like celery. Don't like the flavor of celery. But it's not really it's not really that strong celery you know thing in your mouth and everything. So it's uh, I'm gonna give that a thumbs up. Uh, maybe not way up and everything. It's it, it's a uh, novelty. It's or you know in some places it's not a novelty, but uh, I consider it a novelty uh, celery flavored soda. So there we go. Thumbs up. All righty. So I would trust you with my Toyota Solaris. You would be a fool to trust me to work on your car. Have a great stream, Val. Got to head out to the hospital for work. Bye, everybody. Well, bye, Jesse. Thank you for making trippy food a part of your afternoon. Or evening, depending on what part of the country you're from. Where are you from, Jesse? I usually write this stuff down so I don't forget. But there's so many. Jesse is, oh, your LA area. Okay. Yes, yes, Jesse, please stay safe. All right. Uh, our question was, what is the, no, that's not our question. I forgot. We left it on the burner. What type of star, uh, star is awarded to restaurants where the food is of exceptional quality and I think everybody was throwing that out there. Let's see. I got to scroll back up here. Hang on. Let's see. Uh, Q the Critic was the first one said Michelin star. That is correct. The Cassandra said Michelin. Uh, spelling that wrong, it's okay. We know what you meant, and you're right. Tire star. ATW, kind of like tire star. He's not wrong. Uh, Amy Cakey, Michelin star, correct. Sonic Goodyear star. I think he's being a wise ass though. I don't think he really means that, but that's it's funny and it's good. Uh, uh, Michelin, uh, Tom says Michelin star. I knew Tom would know. Uh, and then uh, Sonic goes with Firestone, and he's like going through all the tire different brands of tires. Um, heard there was a oh okay Michelin Michelin yeah it is Michelin of course. There we go. All right, so we did uh, snack beverage. Time for another snack. We're an hour in. We're doing okay, I think. So, uh, so that reminds me. So, just in case we run out of time, there is one like you know, like I'll go, I'll go through like stories in the news. This one I thought was was funny, and I, I don't know if you guys have seen this. <clears throat> Subway. There is a lawsuit against Subway, I think, in California, and they're being sued because they're somebody is stating that their tuna sub doesn't have any tuna in it. Um, they're saying it doesn't even have any seafood in it. It doesn't have fish in it. Now they're not saying what it does have in it. I don't know if they if they they said they took it to a lab or something and, and tried to to figure out what it is in there. But they're saying it's not tuna, and they're also saying it's not seafood. Or it's not fish. So the question is, what is it, or is this a scam? You know, where they're just doing them like they put something together and they said this is what I found in my tuna sandwich or something. I I don't know. Anyways, there's a lawsuit. Uh, Subway. Here, let me send you the link to that. Here we go. Um, it's gross. It is gross. Uh, but, you know, usually tuna is. No, uh, Scott, so funny you should mention that fake tuna. So uh, go back and look. We did a uh, trippy food episode on, um, I can't remember, is Virginia something is the name of the company. 
and it's tuna, T-O-O-N-A, which is a vegan version of tuna. And, um, and so that is fake tuna. Now, the thing is, when we ate it, uh, when I ate it, uh, I tried to prepare it like you would uh, prepare, uh, you know, tuna for a tuna fish sandwich. So basically, I put some mayo, some mustard. Uh, I don't know, put uh, some maybe some some relish in it, some other stuff in it. And when I ate it, I'm like, you know what? I like this, but I think I like this better than real tuna. So it didn't taste anything like tuna. The texture wasn't anything like tuna, but it tasted to me, it tasted better than tuna. So it would be like. Like if somebody says you want a tuna fish sandwich, I'm like, do you have any of that fake tuna, that tuna, T-O-O-N-A? Um, and if they said no, I'm like, yeah, I guess I'll have a tuna fish sandwich. But to me, it was better, even though it was fake. And 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 my version of better is not that it tasted exactly like tuna. It was that it didn't taste anything like tuna, uh, but I like the taste better. Uh, look up the chicken story in Canada with CBC Marketplace. I will do If somebody else can do that and send me the link, then I can check that out. I, would, I prefer steak and cheese, roast beef, Italian, BLT, or meatball sub. Yeah. Uh, tuna sub is kind of like uh, like if somebody goes out and buys a whole bunch of subs and then it's like, hey, everybody, come and grab your subs. And there's like maybe you got 20 people and then everybody's grabbing a sub. The last one will always be that tuna sub. That will be the one, last one. And then if you're the last person to get the sub, you're going to have to eat the tuna fish sub. That's usually how that works out. Tuna is yummy. Subway is gross. Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the tuna, though. You know, like dollar store tuna, I'm sure, is not yummy. It is cat food canned tuna. <clears throat> um, no, because cat, I'm sure cat food cat food canned tuna probably is tuna. They're, they're stating that there's no, there's no tuna in it, and there's no fish in it. So I don't know what it is. Uh, it is not vegan tuna, uh, but they have it Subway. I don't know what it is that they have at Subway. Uh, I, I, I can honestly say I've never been... Um, inspired enough to try a tuna sub at, uh, at I, I tried tuna subs at sub shops, but I've never tried a tuna sub at Subway. I, I'm almost tempted to go and try it just to see like, wow, what does this stuff taste like if it's not real tuna? So Val stop being gross. I'd have to shut my channel down. Q. Uh, I had a quiz nose yet. Uh, hey, Anthony Gerardot, you are new to the room, I believe. Uh, are you, uh, are you new to the channel? Have uh, have you watched the streams before? Have you um, have you subscribed? Have you been part of our family for a while? Because I, I don't recognize the name, so I think you may be new here. Uh, everybody, please give a hearty trippy food welcome to Anthony Gerardot. Um, chicken and sea water based is yummy. Um, you mean the little packets? Those packets? Those are pretty good compared to Jersey Nights. Subway is gross. Yeah, I would I would think so. Or firehouse subs or any subs. Um, okay, uh, let's do that this week. Let's do what this week? The, the tuna? Well, let's do something. All right, get in touch with me, and we'll talk about that. All right, so everybody's saying hello to Anthony. That gives me a chance to open our first snack, our second snack, which is Trader Joe's Olive and Herbs Mixed Nuts, a festive mix of seasoned and roasted almonds, cashews, pecans, and olives which is like the really weird part. But hey, we're all about weird. I open the bag and Doodle comes into the room. All right, Doodle, I'm sorry. All I have is your dead fish snack, so it's going to have to be another dead fish, okay? Another dead fish snack? There you go. Mm-mm, mm mm So good and so good for you. There he goes. And he's off like a bride's nighty. All right. So let's open these up. Ooh, those smell like dead fish. Ike subs in Westwood is amazing. Better than that JM. JM. I'm not sure what the JM is. Um, but uh, there's, a, yeah, uh, Ike's is all over the place. I think um, Matt Zion from Reckless Eating, I think he did an episode at uh, Ike's in uh, San Diego. So they're all over the place. I got to go to Ike's. Uh, Matt said they're really good. I have to try, I'm going to have to check out Ike's. Maybe get Ike's. Gym. Doodle, pace yourself, dude. Oh, it, we do call him dude. New to the live stream and watch you stuff because of Matt Reckless Eating. Oh, okay. And by the way, uh, uh, Matt is, uh, or and Reckless Eating in general is, um, right now, they're kind of going through a rough time because uh, they got banned off Twitch because of a joke that Matt made. You know, and, and like, I get it, but at the same time, it's like maybe maybe taking things a little bit too crazy. And, um, and then... Um, 
you know, got a lot of episodes taken down off YouTube because of the vomiting or, you know, whatever. So um, they could use some help. So if you guys are fans of reckless eating and everything, you know, just make sure that you <clears throat> get people to watch, get people to like the videos and everything, help them out. I mean, they have like 650,000 subscribers, I think, like that. But <clears throat> but again, they're they're under pressure, a lot of pressure right now. So help them out if you can. I like Ike's Deli in Santa Monica. I don't know. Is, if, is Ike's Deli... The same thing as Ike's Sandwich Shop. Are they the same? I don't know if they are or not. Um, let's see. I did not. Let's see. We did a snack beverage. I didn't know. I didn't read a card before I opened this. Well, you guys got to keep me honest here. Uh, new live stream watching because of, oh, okay. Uh, CBC Market Place test Subway chicken. Test came out not real chicken. Subway sued and lost. Yeah, and there was another thing where um, I want to say France. Uh, their bread. They were, they said that their bread, their, like something in their bread, made it not real bread. So that was weird too. Uh, what did Matt say? Uh, he made a. Uh, what, let's see. Will I get a strike for saying it? Um, uh, they were playing a game or something, and he says, "If Nando wins, I will." Um, I don't can I, I, I'm, I'm just not sure if I can say it or like I will take a hit for saying it. I don't know. Uh, but he was joking around something he said. Uh, Reckless has a Patreon, which I guess is still good, but uh, they were they were making some money off Twitch too. <clears throat> uh, Twitch defended their channel and YouTube were going to <clears throat> give them love. Yes, give them love. I'm not sure the one I know is a Jewish deli on 15th and Wilshire. Don't say it. I won't say it. <clears throat> Q. Just in case. Uh, high sugar content, yeah. Said if not, I was, yeah. Uh, uh, Quincy, that's that's essentially what he said, but it was a joke, and and they just didn't take it that way. I was gonna give him a dead fish, and he took off. Okay, if he comes back, he can have another dead fish. So before I eat these, let's take a look at these. They're like like coat. You can see the herbs all over these. You see them? It looks interesting. I'm trying to find. Oh, there's an olive. Yeah, a little dried olive. Interesting. That that guy there. That's interesting. All right. Uh, so let's let's read another card before I eat. Forgot about that. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm gonna because this one's sort of easy. I'm gonna read the answer and have you guys guess the question. Okay. <clears throat> the answer is. And the answer is deer. Deer is the answer. Deer. Back burner. That's the the answer is deer. Imagine you have a deer. You're prancing along. You get thirsty. You spy a little brook. So you're gonna get a drink of water. Just as your little doe lips touch the surface of the water, bam! <clears throat> All right. Uh, so let's eat our snacks. That's a unique looking handful of stuff. I thought it was like olive flavored, but they actually have little pieces, little bits of olives in there. Ingredients, almonds, cashews, pecans, Kalamata olives, olives, sea salt, sunflower oil, extra virgin olive oil, lactic acid, cane sugar, herb blend of oregano, sage, thyme, basil, marjoram, and rosemary. That's a lot of herbs. Sea salt, natural flavors, xanthan gum. Contains almond. Yeah, well, you said that. Contains cashew. Well, you said that too. Cane contains pecan. Well, you also said that. May contain traces of milk, soy, wheat, peanut, Brazil nut, frog, toad, um, coconut, hazelnut. Yeah. Blah, blah. Okay. All little warning things. Cheers. I love your questions more than I love the real question. No, it's funny. They put sea salt on these, but they're not salty. Usually like mixed nuts, they have that saltiness to them. And this don't this doesn't. 
that olive taste is really weird because you don't expect to taste that when you're um, you know taking a bite of mixed nuts. You don't expect to taste olive with a this really strong taste of olives. Not bad, just un really unusual. There's cane sugar in there, but it's not really sweet. And you kind of get that olive breathiness in there. Nice mix of the herbs. You know, it's not too crazy. It's nice. I'm going to give that a big thumbs up. They're actually really good. It's kind of a refreshing change from your typical mixed nuts. These are actually pretty good. So I'm going to get a thumbs way up. Big thumbs up on that. All right, hey, by Q the Critic, is he leaving? Or is he saying bye to somebody else? Hey, God, got a jet. Uh, yes, do that, uh, Q, give me a call uh, or an uh, email or anything. Uh, but get, get in touch with me and let's do something soon. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Q. Good to see you. Or right, even if it's just your name and your little um, burger icon. Where did you purchase that ballot? That is Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's brand. So I got that at Trader Joe's. I hope Trippy Food is not canceled. Well, if Trippy Food was canceled, you would not be hearing me say this right now. Are you hearing me say this right now? Let me see a hands up. Just so let me know. The impression sounded like Joe Pesci. No, actually, it wasn't Joe Pesci. It was um, Marissa Tomei. It was in the same movie as Joe Pesci, but it's when uh, when um, she was talk. Uh, he was going to go out hunting deer. And then she was she was trying to talk him out of hunting the deer, so she used that story like, "Imagine you have a deer, you prance along, you get there. It's hilarious. It's like the the best part of that movie, which was uh, my cousin Vinny. So, uh, but uh, but that Marissa, it was a Marissa, Marissa Tomei speech, and it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything? Everyone is saying bye. See you soon. Bye 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 bye. Good to meet you. And oh okay, that's that's Q. Later, Tom. Um, bye. Okay. Everybody's saying goodbye. That's fine. Okay. So, uh, the answer was deer. And, um, the question was from what animal do we get venison? Which I think somebody said specifically venison. I think that was Tom, if I'm not mistaken. Let me scroll back up here. Uh, what is venison? Yeah. Uh, which is essentially the same question. So I think Tom got it specifically right. Um, but, uh, let's see some, most common hunted large mammal, probably right too. Uh, what is Bambi? Also right. Um, I just like your uh, your phrasing of, of the question uh, more so than the, the actual question. So that was fun. That worked out well. I like that. All right. We did uh, snack, beverage, snack. Time for beverage. So we are going to Colombia. Vamos a Colombia. Um, we are going to try the Colombiana uh, Champagne Cola. Uh, Doodle, now you came back. Do you want a dead fish? That's all I can give you is dead fish because your mom has the liver snacks. There you go. Hope he eats his dinner. I scrolled. I apologize. It was a great movie, Anthony. You're absolutely right. All right. Uh, so uh, Cham Colombiana Champagne Cola from Colombia. No smell. Uh, let's see. Let's use our Miami Beach glass. And it's a clear bottle, so you can tell what kind. It's a. It's like a pinkish orange. It's the best I can describe it. Lots of bubbles. That's always nice. It smells like soda. I mean, it's really. It's almost like a cream soda, but not as creamy. It's like a, like a hint of candy, if that makes any sense. Doodle, pace yourself, man. Pace yourself. You're going to outgrow your sweater. Here, let's take a look. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You got to pace yourself, dude. Self-control. I know you like what I'm having, but you can't have what I'm having. There we go. Back to the beverage. 
Yeah, for me, it's it, it's kind of candy like, uh, not not as sweet or you know as thick as candy, but it almost has like a candy taste to it. It's like if it's like if you made a cream soda into a candy. That's what it. No, no biting. Where did I get the soda? I got this soda at um, Galco's, which is a uh, a large. Um, it uh, they call it Galco's Soda Pop Stop or Galco's Old World Grocery. There's only one of them. It's not like a chain or anything. It's pretty big. It's in an old grocery store, and they have aisles and aisles and aisles and aisles of soda. So if you're in the Los Angeles area, I highly recommend checking it out. It's one of um, uh, it's one of Janice's regular haunts. They, they go there all the time. And they have sodas from all over the world. They do have they have some some wines. They have some uh, beers. They have a big selection of German beers. Um, they have some candies and some hard to find candies. And um, they do sandwiches. They make sandwiches there as well. But uh, but their big thing is the sodas. And um, and that's where I got this Colombiana. So um, you might uh, you probably find this in uh, Latin American grocery. So uh, in the L.A. area. If you go to Vallarta supermarket, you can find it. You, I don't think you can find the small bottles. You find like the two liter bottles of this. Um, and if you're just trying it out, I don't know if I'd want, want to go and buy a two liter bottle of it. But uh, but I know like uh, some Latin American groceries, grocery stores like uh, Vallarta, they would have it there as well. Other places, I'm not sure. Uh, if you have a Latin American grocery near you, check that out and they probably have those there. What is the name of the soda store? Galco's, G-A-L-C-O apostrophe S, Galco's. I used to work at Vallarta. Well, um, that would be cool. Uh, they have a lot. Um, uh, the the Vallarta, the I've been into, they have a they they had like a almost a whole aisle of Colombian stuff. So all kinds of stuff from Colombia. So it's a good place to get Colombian stuff. And that little, um, I guess you would call it a deli uh, for lack of something else, where they make the prepared food out in the front. Really, really good stuff. Like they do a a goat birria that's like really, really good. I mean, awesome stuff. And it's stuff they make in there. But so I, I love Vallarta. It's one of my favorite places to go shopping. Uh, we live Galco's. Yes, Janice, I think I was just mentioning that. I wasn't sure if you were going to jump on that because, you know, your internet and everything. But uh, I was mentioning that Galco's is a great place for getting hard to find sodas. Doodle, you better not want, be one another snack. No, you got to pace yourself. You got to pace yourself, Doodle. Uh, hey, I have to go, everyone. But Val will email you Val at... Well, no, no, Val at trippyfood.com, trippyfood.com. I don't think Reckless Eating even has, has a domain for their email. I think they're like a Gmail or something like that. But it was Val at trippyfood.com, Scott. Uh, really good barbacoa and chicken mole. Yeah, store called. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And, and Scott, take care. Be careful. Uh, I, I'll say it to you because you're leaving. Uh, be careful out there. Take care of others. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you soon. Hopefully next Saturday. So that's gonna get a thumbs up for me. Um, it might be like a little bit, a little bit sweeter. Like I said, it's got that candy-like quality to it. So it's gonna be a little bit sweeter to, for me, than, um, than you know, up some sodas that I really like and everything. But I kind of like that, that, that the sort of cream soda taste, and it's not too crazy on the candiness. So thumbs up. Maybe not a big, huge thumbs up or way up and everything. So. Uh, thumbs up. If we're going to do that that whole thing with the scale, it, it's a thumbs up. It's probably like an eight. Yeah, eight would be up. Middle would be, what do we say? Is it one to ten? One to ten. It's one to ten. So five would be thumbs in the middle. It's going to be around an eight, somewhere around there. All right. Uh, we did the question. Am I am I like slipping on the questions here because I'm thinking like I should be reading the answer to a question here and I and I and I'm not. So all right. So we are gonna eat another snack, and before we eat that snack, we will ask another question. We'll get all caught up. No, no, that one's too easy. Sorry, not gonna ask, not gonna ask that one. Uh God, we're getting all the easy ones here. Let's see. Uh yes, yes, this is a good one. Uh, which drink, one of Shakespeare's favorite tipples, is distilled from honey? Again, the question, which drink, one of Shakespeare's favorite tipples, is distilled from honey? And we shall put this on the back burner and turn the volume down, and we'll go on to our next snack. Hey, Tybalt in the room. Howdy, it's been a minute. It's been a week, Tybalt, but welcome back. Good to see you again. 
And Doodle wants some more dead fish. But Doodle, I got to pace you, man. I got to pace you, okay? Maybe in another, like, 10 minutes or so. Like, when I, are we, let's see, are we doing snack? We did beverage, snack, beverage, snack, beverage, snack, beverage, time for snack. So we are going to de- do these crispy coconut rolls. I don't know if you can eat this. I don't know if dogs can eat coconut. I don't know. Like, there's sesame in it. I don't know if dogs can eat I, I have no idea. I think it's in- interesting. They go through the trouble of making the package, like, match the, the little palm tree there. Like, that's a lot of work right there. Let's hope they taste like they put a lot of work into it. <laughs> Michelin star. No. No, Tom. You're supposed to say kumquat. Ooh, that's a like a plastic smell. That has a weird smell. I mean, I guess you can get coconut out of that. It's like a little bit of a coconut smell. All right, Doodle, you know what? I open a snack, I'll give you a snack. Dead fish. Here you go. These are interesting. Interesting to look at. They're rolls. Here, let's do this. They are crunchy. This is crispy. I'm going to say crunchy. Okay, so um, I will give them that it tastes like coconut. That's really, they taste like, co- you taste the coconut, they're crunchy. They say crispy, but crunchy. I'll accept cr- crunchy. The sesame is from the sesame seeds, but there's not a lot of them to be like a really strong taste. So they deliver on their promise. So I'm going to give them a thumbs up. They taste like coconut. They are cri- uh, crispy and everything, but it, it's almost like it's almost like there should be another flavor in there. It's almost like it's it's asking for another flavor. And I suppose that their idea of another flavor is sesame. There's not enough sesame in there to give it enough, much of another flavor. Yeah, they're good. A little bit cool too, like a kind of cool, refreshing, which is unusual for like a you know a roasted snack. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Maybe not a big enthusiastic thumbs up, but a thumbs up nonetheless, because they're pretty good and they deliver on their promise. So there we go. Now, the question was, which drink one of Shakespeare's favorite tipples is distilled from honey? That was a question. Which drink one of Shakespeare's favorite tipples is distilled from honey? And the answer was, in fact, made. You are absolutely correct. Everybody is absolutely correct except Tom who said Michelin star. Dump hot sauce on him for the missing flavor. I, You know, if I had hot sauce here, I would do that. But I don't think that's the missing flavor. I just don't know what that missing flavor is. It's a, uh, you know what it is? It's that French thing, that uh, je ne sais quoi. Uh, I bet they would be grumbled in a Thai curry. Um, I don't think so, because only because they're sweet. So I, the, the sweetness would, would maybe be a little bit off, but uh, maybe, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try something like that. Maybe not in a curry itself, but in something like in, it crumbled on in the Thai food. Maybe, maybe I salute. Doodle, calm down. Doodle, you're, you're, you're a dead fishaholic. Calm down. I did say meat under the star. I, I saw that, Tom, but I was just going by your first one, which was funnier. And was surprised that you didn't go with kumquat. All right, so uh, that is a snack uh, time to do our last beverage. We are we are at the uh, this is not the second hour. We are in the the at the hour and a half mark. We have a half an hour to go. We have a beverage and a snack left. So I think we're doing okay. <laughs> we are. Yeah, uh, Tom, I'm 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 counting on you. Somehow we are going to make that happen. One is going to make that happen. But I think, Tom, uh, I, I will share this. Uh, t- Tom and I were discussing kumquat because it's always his throwout line, which is always funny in the live stream. 
but uh, but then he said, well, maybe I should do something with kumquat. But then he was looking in, like, certainly in his area where they're not grown in uh, Colorado, they're very expensive. So um, so I don't know. Still still up in the air. Okay, so oh, uh, I feel like we asked this question before. We did ask this question. Are we have we gone full circle? Well, shh, we have thirty five episodes. I bet we have. Yes, we 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 have gone through every single question. I mean, I can recycle if you want. The, the, they'll be like the old questions. So, you want to do that? You guys okay with that? I mean, I have to get a, a new deck of new questions because I think we've we've already cycled through all these questions. So for for today, at least for today, I will I will read some of the old questions, even though we've asked asked them before. They're fun, anyways, and maybe you weren't here for it, so that's what it, so that's good. Amazon delivered the steering wheel food tray that I ordered. Wow, it's like everybody was. It's like Q just got his. Janice, you just got yours. Uh, Janice, did you get the did you get the one that uh, Ken Domic uses? Because I think that was like the big one on the internet. Everybody's going like, oh, you got to get that one. You got to get that one. You got because that's the one I got, the one that he had. So, uh, what did you miss? Well, you missed uh, two snacks and two beverages. So we're on our last beverage. Our last beverage. We're just about to do our last beverage. And then we're going to move on to our snack. So you missed some stuff, but not everything. So you're, you're never too late, Bacon. Uh, okay, the question is, and again, this will be familiar to some of you. The question is, in what de decade did sliced bread first appear? That's the question. The question is, in what decade did sliced bread first appear? So again, back burner that one. I got a cast iron Dutch oven. Ooh, last weekend it made an amazing roast. I bet it did. I, I would love to get a Dutch oven. Uh, I, I, I think probably my most used, um, it's not utensil, what would you call that? Like a cookware uh, would be my um, uh, pressure cooker, I think. But uh, but yeah, I would love to do stuff in a Dutch oven. I'd like to get one of those bean pots too and make beans from scratch. All right, let's do our last beverage, which is um, World Markets uh, House Brand Naturally flavored blood orange grapefruit French soda made in France for over a century. Well, that's funny because I don't think World Market is that old, but it is their brand. So let's open this up. If we can figure out how this thing works. How does this thing work? Here we go. That's a nice satisfying pop. We get like little steamy stuff coming out there, bubbles in the neck. I'm excited about this. And uh, let's see, our last shot glass is Cozumel. Let's go to Cozumel. Here we go. Uh, it's funny, Sonorco, when you say the, the phrase, the best things in the sliced bread, people were talking about uh, Betty White. And uh, and Betty White is older than sliced bread, so they say Betty White's the hottest thing since sliced bread. She's actually from before sliced bread. There we go. It's pink. It's effervescent. It's cloudy. It's blood orange grapefruit French soda. Wee. Ooh. ooh, that's a it has a soapy smell. That's weird. It smells like soap. I hope that was clean glass. If there's soap in there, that'll clean me up. Oh, there's the grapefruit right off the bat. It tastes like a fresh, a fresh squeezed grapefruit. Like, um, what is it? Uh, is it squirt? Is the soda, the, the grapefruit flavored soda? This tastes more like grapefruit than even squirt does. It's like, and and um, I'm not getting as much blood orange. Maybe a little, uh, it's, it's more subtle. The, the first thing I taste is grapefruit. And it, it, it tastes like you're eating a grapefruit right off the table, like a spoonful of grapefruit. Wow. Yes, uh, uh, bacon. Um, it, it, it looks like uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado, has challenged me to eat the 2020 burrito. So we're going to have to do that soon. Not looking forward to it, but, you know, you got to do what your challenge should. I'm going to give this a thumbs way up. That is really, really good. 
Um, the, just the, the grapefruit taste, it's not too sugary. It's light. Uh, it's bubbly. It's, it's a really, really good soda. And there's that little uh, rubberized seal cap so you can put it together and you don't lose all the bubbles and everything, and you can drink that later. So that is awesome. That is going to give it a big, big thumbs way up. So our question, where did I get the soda? At Cost Plus World Market, because it is it is the World Market brand. I got it at Cost Plus, which is really weird because it says, you know, for over a century, but I don't think World Market has been around for over a century. So I don't know, I don't know how that works. I don't know, do they buy the company that makes it and it's their own brand? Our World Market sodas come from the Alsace region, region of France. I don't see like an, another company here. It's just, it's like the um, World Market brand. So that's really weird. I, I don't think World Market has been around for over a century. Maybe. I could be wrong. Uh, Squirt tastes like a more spritzy 7-Up. No, because it, uh, it it has much more citric acid in it um, than 7-Up. And it does have that, that somewhat of a grapefruit taste, but not, like I said, not this tastes like you're eating a grapefruit. This is like, it's like hardcore grapefruit. That's really good. And it's, re it's light. It's not overly sugar sugary. So, uh, yeah, got that at Cost Plus World Market. Uh, Tom, where is the closest Cost Plus World Market to you? Because they're everywhere. Uh, how close is the closest uh, Cost Plus World Market to you? Would it be good with liqueur? Um, something light, I think. You wouldn't want, like, I, I think uh, it would be, maybe like, uh, because it's blood orange and grapefruit, maybe like a vodka. So it'd be kind of like a fancy screwdriver. Uh, so... Uh, vodka and not heavy on the vodka. Go light on the vodka, I think. That'd be the, about the only thing that you would want to put that with, you know. Or um, uh, maybe if you wanted to mix it with something, uh, like I wouldn't use Grand Marnier uh, or anything like that with it. So, yeah, maybe vodka. I think it would be good. Oh, you're taking off, Sonic? I will see you soon. Thank you for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Um, let's see. Okay. And to please tell me if I missed anything, please. Because I'm, you know, doing some stuff here. Uh, the question of the 40s, Tom, the Cassandra, Snorkel, also the 30s. It was back the 1930s. I would have thought it would be older than that. Like, you know, how hard is it to slice bread? But this is like prepackaged sliced bread. Not not like, you know, buy a loaf of sliced, like the, the, the baker slices it for you by hand. They're talking about like machine sliced and packaged and everything. So the 1930s makes sense because they, they had machines that would do it. It kind of makes sense. It's just surprising. I would have thought it would have been earlier than that. Well, it is time for our last snack. Uh, so I will read another card that we've already read before for now. Till we, maybe I'll have to go out and see if I can find some more cards. I don't know where you get these cards. I will try to find something. Lorena is another brand name for, the grapefruit so for this grapefruit soda. I don't see anything that says Lorena on it. It's kind of weird. I mean, there's nothing on the bottle that that says anything about any other company except uh, World Market. It's kind of weird. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, Cost Plus was established in 1958. Yeah, so that is not more than a century. That's like half a century. Is it half a century? It is half a century. No, it's more than half a century. Yeah. 60 years, 62 years, I think. Uh, went to the Wonder Bread Factory as a kid in Sacramento. Oh, it was pretty interesting. Got a free loaf of bread at the end of the tour. The smell was amazing. I'll bet, yeah, a fresh baked um, uh, loaf of Wonder Bread probably would smell much better than, like, you know, the one you buy in the grocery store that's maybe a week old. Uh, the question is, what cocktail consists of Tia Maria, vodka, and Coke? Now, uh, I will tell you that I have seen this with different ingredients than Tia Maria, vodka, and Coke, but I'm, I imagine that, that uh, some, of those, some of those ingredients are the same. But uh, which cocktail consists of Tia Maria, vodka, and Coke? That'll sit here, and we're going to open our last snack, which is Mitika or Mitika or Mitisa. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. You might guys want to take a, sh take a stab at that. Uh, crunchy... Pica Quisos, a spicy giant corn kernels, product of Spain. Uh, these uh, cost plus world market. As you can tell, I get a lot of stuff at cost plus world market. And Galco's. And 
Vallarta, and uh, Rocket Fizz. But I, I don't know how far east Rocket Fizz goes. How do you open the stupid thing? There's a little thing there. Are you supposed to? Oh, I, there's a little tab. Break the tab off. This is bizarre. There we go. We broke the tab off. And now, ha! Have a look at that. So uh, they look like the ink. They don't look like corn nuts. They look like the ink corn that you get from Trader Joe's. Except uh, these kind of have like a glaze on them. Uh, they're supposed to be, what was it? Uh, the uh, dusted with cayenne pepper and smoked paprika. And paprika is uh, made from bell peppers. So it's not uh, it's not spicy pepper, but it gives you that pepper taste. Um, and um, cayenne pepper is spicy. So let's try it. It is a fancy corn nut bacon. You are right. It smells like corn. Claudia misses trippy food. Would most likely hear me eating these and say, are you eating rocks in there? They are very chewy. Now, for being with cayenne pepper, they have like a little bit of burn on the tongue, but they're not, they're not like fiery. Is there like a nice burn on there? And if you like to crunch things, they're really satisfying. I'm sure you guys can hear that. But there's almost more of a there's almost more moisture in there than there are in, in the than in the Trader Joe's Inca corn kernels. There seems to be more moisture in there. They're still in there. Those are really good though. Really good snack. And you can't eat a lot of them only because your jaw would hurt if you ate this this whole thing in one sitting. But it's satisfying. Um, if I was going to add anything to this, maybe a little bit more salt. I mean, there's some salt in there, but it's not they're not really salty. And it tastes like it maybe you could use a little bit more salt, but still they're going to get a big thumbs up for me because I like the flavor. I like the spiciness and everything. Um, I would eat these more than I would eat the um, um, corn nuts or the Trader Joe's Inca corn. So there we go. Now, it is time to try our beverages again together as one united together so we're going to start with the with doc brown's celery soda great scott marty and then we'll go with the colombiana which is the name of a woman who comes from colombia they call them a colombiana And last but not least, our World Market Blood Orange Grapefruit French Soda. Bubbly. Hi, Greg Wells. Greg Wells. It's like we got 15 minutes to go. But hey, you're never too late and glad you decided to, um, to share your afternoon with us, you, even if it's just for another 15 minutes. There we go. Really unusual color. We get that pink from the blood orange grapefruit. We get that kind of orangey red um, color from the Colombiana. The celery doesn't add any color at all. Uh, but a weird combination of flavors, I think. Let's see. I can smell the celery. That's about all I smell. Cheers. Now, for some reason, the three of those together are sugary. I don't know if I like that. But, you know, it's like soda. So you have to kind of expect that. Um, 
hint of grapefruit, strong celery taste. The blood orange comes out a little bit more mixed together with everything else. And then I think that that syrupy, that sweet syrupy thing is the Colombiana underneath it. It's kind of like candy. <clears throat> so this tastes like um, a poor attempt at a citrus candy in liquid form. I don't know that I would. I, I don't know that I would enjoy something like this on a regular basis. So I'm going to give that. I mean, it's not terrible. I'm going to give that a thumbs in the middle. Ah. There we go. Yeah, wouldn't do that again. I think uh, I like all three of those. I just would not. Don't, don't you know? Not crazy together. So, uh, I, and I don't know that you could add. Um, I don't know that you could add something to that to, to make it better and everything. It's just not not great. So what was the card question again? Sorry, Janice. The card question was, which cocktail consists of Tia Maria, vodka, and Coke? I think Bacon tried to answer that and said something vodka and Coke. But vodka and Coke is a good start. Um, again, I have seen this drink made with some other th stuff besides Tia Maria. I have seen it made with uh, Kahlua. Want to take a stab at it? What was the first thing? Can you spell that? Uh, Tia Maria, which means like Aunt Maria, Aunt, Aunt Mary in Spanish. Tia, T-I-A, Aunt Maria, M-A-R-I-A, uh, Mary in Spanish. It's Aunt Mary, which I guess is a specific type of alcohol, alcoholic beverage. Uh, Tia Maria, vodka, and Coke. Uh, hey, Food Taster TV! Better late than never. It's good to see you. I guess you you were busy doing some stuff today, but uh, always good to see you, Food Taster TV. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are winding it down now. We are in the last 15 minutes, but uh, glad you decided to spend that with us. So welcome. Uh, did we get anybody guessing at that? I see somebody guessing at the question. That, uh, let's see. Smoky Greatness, Fancy Corn Nut. Uh, I don't think nobody took a guess at it, what the, the beverage was. Gin and vodka and Coke. No, that wasn't it. And I don't think that's that would be make the same thing. Uh, the beverage is a black Russian. And again, like I said, I've seen a black Russian made with uh, Kahlua rather than Tia Maria. But maybe Tia, Tia Maria is a coffee-flavored liqueur. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure what Tia Maria is. Is Phil Gerard still there? Because if he is, he would know what Tia Maria is. He's, he seems to know all that stuff. <clears throat> uh, I've never heard of Tia Maria either. But uh, I'm guessing uh, it's something Spanish. So, ooh, I went fuzzy there for a second. Uh, okay, so we did our beverages. Let's do our uh, snacks. Let's combine our snacks. Got to do that too, right? You want, you want another card? Let's do another card. Uh, Tia Maria is a dark liqueur made originally in Jamaica using Jamaican coffee beans. So it is a coffee liqueur. So the same as, like I said, Kahlua, which is why I've seen black Russians made with Kahlua and not Tia Maria, but that's just me. Yes, Janice, it is a black Russian. Um, I just said that, but I, I, I realized I didn't answer the question previously. So yeah, it is a black Russian. I have some Devil's River coffee liqueur. You could use that too. That's probably going to be really good because it sounds unique. I would try that. It's still snowing hard here. Wow. Um, how long has it been snowing, Tom? Uh, yeah, this is a good one. Uh, what is the world's most expensive spice? Again, the question is, what is the world's most expensive spice? And it is not baby spice. Uh, so we are going to combine these. Let's see, what is the best way to do this? I'm going to do a handful because I don't really see anything we can put that on. Oh, we ate our apple, our apple pie. We could have put it on an apple pie, but we ate it. So we're only doing the, the other three that are left. I eat the apple pie. Sorry about that. All right, we're just going to have to do a handful. So let's do some of these Spanish corn nuts. Let's see, maybe we do one of these. Um, crispy coconut rolls. Let's do two. I have a big mouth. I can handle more than one. And let's do our Trader Joe's Olive and Herbs Mixed Nuts. With mixed nuts with olives in it. Make sure we get some olives in there. There we go. That's a handful. Doodle, can't eat olives. They're bad for you. Let me eat this, and then I will get you a snack. Just hang on one second. 
here we go. Our Czech snack mix, our weird Czech snack mix. He's done with the fish. The coconut disappears. The nuts, the corn nuts add texture and spice. That cayenne. The olives come in at the end. Not a bad mixture. Although I think the coconut rolls add too much sweetness to it. If they, if they, if they weren't so sweet, I think it would be better. Still, not bad. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. It would be a weird thing. It would be a weird combination to mix together. But still, not too bad. So that's kind of a thumbs up for me. I need some water to rinse that out with. Better be making some great biryani for that price. Yep. Uh, what is the price? I uh, saw some stuff on a store the other day. It was like 10 strands for $16. It is expensive. It is the most expensive spice, which is the answer to the question. Saffron. Correct. Uh, vanilla it, uh, can be expensive, too, if you're buying the beans. Um, a lot of times when you get the vanilla extract, or the imitation vanilla, uh, they use coumadin, which is actually a blood thinner, but it gives the it gives the same effect in your mouth as uh, as vanilla. So some people use that as a, a, a substitute for vanilla uh, in artificial vanilla, vanilla flavoring. They use coumadin, which is a blood thinner, which is bad. So but uh, so don't use artificial. Um, which it's relatively cheap if you buy the the Mexican uh, uh, vanilla extract. They extract it with alcohol, so it's mostly alcohol um, with that vanilla extract in it. But it's cheaper than buying the vanilla beans and grinding them down yourself. Which I think, like, if you grind down the vanilla beans, the pod from the vanilla beans is what they use for like the um, uh, vanilla bean. Um, ice cream, like you've seen it with the, the, the kind of the black flecks in it. That's from grinding down the, the, the uh, pod from the bean. And vanilla comes from an orchid, uh, or, or, uh, orchid tree. Uh, it is the seeds, the seed pod of the orchid. But um, the saffron, um, I can't remember what kind of flower saffron comes with. Saffron is the... Um, stamens i believe those the things that come up inside there and they're picked by hand like with a tweezer they're picked by hand and they're very very expensive so again i don't remember uh maybe somebody could look that up what kind of um what kind of uh flower the uh, saffron comes from i don't know all right so we do have time to go over a couple of these uh fun things uh, one is, and we're going to tr try to get that, is um, uh, if you're familiar with Frank's Red Hot Sauce. I don't know how many how many hotheads do we have out there, which are like people who like hot sauces. Uh, I do, uh, as you can tell by my refrigerator full of hot sauces, that I, I am an, a hot sauce aficionado. Uh, Frank's Hot Sauce uh, is kind of a utility hot sauce, but it's... Um, it's a thinner hot sauce. He wouldn't use it for for everything. Like I I can't see putting Frank's Red Hot Sauce on eggs. The reason I bring up Frank's Red Hot Sauce is because according to Food and Wine, and I, I think uh, some other outlets have covered it as well, Frank's Red Hot Sauce will soon soon come in a sandwich ready slice form. Now uh, here, let me uh, give you the link to that. Now they. Um, we got in touch with them to see if we could get some of those so we could try them out. So the two that they're releasing at first, one is Frank's Red Hot Sauce, which they thought, well, the one I thought was a big deal is they are also doing Secret Armadillo. I mean, not Secret Aardvark, Secret Aardvark Sauce from Portland. They're, they're also doing that. And basically, it almost looks like a, a slice of tomato aspic, right? It, it, uh, so my understanding is uh, the way they make it is they cook down those vegetables 
uh, like peppers or whatever, the, the, whatever the vegetables they cook down, they cook that down to make the hot sauce. And then what's left, that, that kind of mash that's left afterwards, they kind of compress that down, dry it out a little bit, and they make like a slice that you would put on like a hamburger or something of, uh, of hot sauce. So it's a hot sauce slice. And it comes in a, a, like, like a little foil packet, you know, something like this, comes in a packet like that. I don't know how many there are in there. But uh, they're, they've announced that they're going to be doing other ones, but the ones that are announcing that, that they announced that they're going to release first are is Frank's Red Hot Sauce and uh, um, Secret Aardvark Sauce. So I'm, I'm trying to get that because I, I love uh, Secret Aardvark Sauce. For me, it's my kind of go-to table hot sauce, and it goes on anything. So, again, we're trying to uh, get in touch with them and see how we can get that. And uh, we will do an episode on that. Or maybe we'll put them on a burger or something. We'll figure out something to put them on. But I thought that was really interesting is that, you know, instead of putting pouring the hot sauce on and what it is, you've got a sandwich ready slice um, of, you know, kind of compressed the stuff that they use to make the hot sauce. So I don't know if it's going to have an authentic taste. I don't know if it's going to taste like like um, like you're drinking a solid. I mean, you're eating the solid hot sauce. But, you know, it remains to be seen. It'll be interesting. So I'd wrap a slice of hot sauce around my bacon. Uh, by your bacon, I think you mean your bacon, I hope. I like a hot sauce fruit roll-up. I think that's probably what it's going to be like. Uh, there is a place uh, in Los Angeles called Plan Check, and um, uh, they're known for their burgers, but they're known for their burgers because they make something called ketchup leather, which is like a ketchup fruit roll-up that they put on their burgers. So they it, it, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, I don't know how they make it. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember the, the name of the chef there. Ernesto, I can't remember his last name, starts with an E. Uh, but they've been doing that for years uh, where they do, uh, they're, calling, they're calling it ketchup leather that they put on uh, the uh, burgers. And I think this is probably something along those same lines. I want a cranberry sauce leather to wrap a turkey. I don't know, I'd wrap a whole turkey with that. That's gonna going to be like overkill. But... Uh, um, the thing about cranberry sauce is cranberry sauce is pretty firm anyway, so you can you could essentially cut a slice of that, but I guess you would want that to have more like a fruit roll up texture to it, right? Like something with like a little bite to it that you know that pulls away, as opposed to cranberry sauce, which is kind of like it's a gel it's a gelatin, so you just kind of like you don't even need teeth to eat it. Uh, hot sauce fruit roll up would be odd. It is odd, but they uh, but they, like I said, I think they've already released the Franks and the. Um, Secret Arbrex sauce. So we're going to try to get some, and we're going to try those out and see what they taste like. want to try the mayo slices. Do they, uh, the Cassandra, what are the ones that they have? Did they have mayo? Uh, is it like a specific type of my mayo? I, I don't know. That's kind of weird. But yeah, I thought that was interesting and um, and uh, want to uh, want to try that. So we're going to try to get those. Uh, we're in the works uh, trying to get some other stuff that they've announced. I don't want to really come out and say what it is that we're trying to get, only because, you know, <clears throat> if we can't get it, I'll tell you what it was. But otherwise, um, I want it to be kind of a surprise because it'll be seasonal. Um, and we'll leave it at that. I always thought peanut butter and jelly slices were lazy, but this sounds fun. I never heard of peanut butter and, sli and jelly slices. Is there somebody who actually makes that? Peanut butter and jelly slices? That actually sounds like a good idea. And yeah, it is lazy. But uh, but the thing is, you're changing the texture. And I think that, that, would, that would, is what would make them interesting. Mayo slices are popular in Japan. I don't know if we can find them in Canada or the USA. I don't know either, but I'm going to have to look for that. Mayo slices, it sounds interesting. Um, it, when you say it's uh, popular in Japan, would that be you know, like the, what is it, QP? Is that the the, the Japanese mayo? QP, I think it is. Um, or, or are we talking about like, uh, you know, Miracle Whip uh, mayo? mayo. Uh, Matt's favorite, but uh, not real mayo. Uh, it was like Ocean Spray made squeezable bottles of cranberry sauce, added tons of sugar, and made it extra gross and weird like snot. Yeah, why would you do that? Cranberry sauce is cranberry sauce, right? And don't mess with it. But if you were going to make a fruit roll-up out of cranberries, I think that would be that would be interesting. That, that's it. A fruit make a you don't have to make it uh, cranberry sauce. You just make a fruit roll-up from cranberries. And I think that would work. Um, I think that would work perfectly. Maybe they, maybe somebody's already doing that. I would be surprised if they weren't. I'd put that uh, on everything. Uh, Terry, uh, which one specifically? The mayo slices, the peanut butter and jelly slices, or the uh, hot sauce slices? Which one? Wow. Uh, so 
Uh, I, I, we actually got to everything. We didn't run out of time. We're not crazy. We're not going over. Um, but I can see by the old clock on the wall that we are just about at three o'clock. So it's not worth starting something else. Uh, I'm glad uh, everybody could make it. It was good to see some people like uh, Quincy, who we hadn't, uh, who we haven't seen in a while, and uh, we had some new people or people who have not been on the stream before. So it's uh, it was a great stream. I apologize for the um, redundancy in the cards. I will try to find something where we're not asking the same questions again. But we've gone through this whole deck, if you can believe that, through 35 episodes, uh, 35 live streams. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you again for joining joining me. I said this before. I will say it again. It is the high point of my week. I look forward to speaking with you all. I uh, look forward to interacting with you all. I want to make sure that I'm doing a good job doing that. I want you to keep me honest. And again, so uh, let me know uh, before I get uh, mods. Make sure that I, um, I am addressing everybody's questions because I want this to be interactive and I want to make sure that, that everybody feels included because I feel like we're like, we're like a family. I, I really, really enjoy this community. Um, those who, those who have other channels and those who don't have other channels and those people who are just interested in, 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 uh, food and our discussion of food. So I thank you all. And I thank you for putting your Saturday aside or a couple of hours of your Saturday aside to join us here. So I will again, remind you, that it is 2021, but it's still crazy out there. So please take care of yourselves. Please be careful. Please take care of others. That's a really important one. Please take care of others. And we will see you soon. Bye, all.